1966, an NFL franchise came to Florida, and the Miami Dolphins were born. They tell an epic story. The Dolphins have won Super Bowl seven. Filled with history and tradition. Every season, new chapters are created, and with each chapter comes new stories. These are the stories of the men who became Miami Dolphins and their lives off the field. This is Under the Helmet. Brent Grimes' story is like none other in the NFL. From growing up in urban Philadelphia to playing football in NFL Europa, he has beat injury and odds. I grew up in the inner city of Philadelphia. Um, in Philly, they call it Uptown. As an only child, he was raised by his single mother. Live with my mom. A lot of respect for my mom, and of course, I can't show how much I appreciate what she did. Being, you know, she raised me by herself. She had a major part of my life, and I, I think she instilled a lot of things in me that allow me to be the player and the person that I am right now. Growing up, Brent had a passion for all sports. Brent was a very active little boy. He liked to run. He liked to flip. He liked to play basketball, football, but he was a good little boy. As a little kid, I, I don't honestly have too many memories of it, but my mom has pictures. Uh, she started me off playing uh, soccer. He was about five years old when he started playing sports. Soccer was the beginning. I had a picture, and what was crazy is I didn't know it, but I didn't remember, but I looked at the picture, and it turned out where we played soccer when I was probably five years, five, six years old was my high school field. So that was kind of kind of interesting. I had no problems with Brent because he was always either playing his video games or at the basketball court. So I always knew where to find him. He attended Northeast High School, one of the oldest high schools in Philadelphia. He started playing junior varsity at Northeast. My days playing Northeast High, you know, football. I mean, I played basketball as well, but I remember it was a lot of good memories. Made a lot of good friends, had a lot, a lot of good times. There in the 10th grade, he would start a journey that would lead him to be one of the best players in the NFL. I actually missed the initial tryout. And uh, my mom, I was just like that. I'll just have to go next year or whatever. But my mom looked out and um, called the coach and told her that I wanted to play football and could I, you know, I missed the first tryout or whatever, but I really wanted to do it. And she got me to go out there and I, I made the team. Well, he missed uh, the tryouts, but then I got a call from his mother asking if he could have a chance. And uh, we gave him the chance. And of course, it was, it was to our benefit that uh, he did make the tryouts and uh, succeeded. And he kept saying, Mom, I'm never going to get to play because I'm too little. Well, I didn't believe that. Despite Brent's size, his athletic ability caught the eye of Coach Schumer, who promoted him right to varsity. His size, he was much smaller than on the varsity level we were looking for, but once he took the field uh, in tryouts, he showed us that uh, skill-wise he had what it took. I have clippings from every game he ever played in. He always thought that he would never get to play professional football because he was so little. His mother was a big part of his success and our success. Uh, she was a big part of our program, the Parents Club, and she, she supported Brett and led him down the right path. And I think he owes a lot, and we owed a lot at that time, uh, to his mother. I play running back for Northeast. I mean, I'm really, I feel myself as an offensive player that's playing defense. I always wanted to be a receiver or a running back. And um, I mean, as you can see, I'm not the biggest dude in the world. So it kind of went, led me towards corner. Coach Schumer just stayed on me because I mean I would get you know I wasn't always the most focused I wasn't the most pro practice like want to do the most but he stayed on me and, and let me know that I had potential to, to get to college and play sports. When he came to practice he practiced he might not have liked it but uh, if he didn't practice he didn't play so uh, I'm sure he in, in the eyes of the coaches he did his best. He did the practice 
He says, I don't need to practice. I already know what to do. I played a lot of basketball growing up. Honestly, I played more basketball than football growing up. Like I just, that was what I did. Played a lot in Philadelphia. If you know about Philadelphia, it's a big basketball city. People love basketball. High school basketball is like, that's a big thing in the city. Yeah, I always had, you know, ever since a little kid, uh, it was always, I could always jump and flip. I was the first doing flips and things like that. And just That's just something I just genetically thank my mom and my dad for, for blessing me with the ability to uh, jump and things like that. He was always amazing when it came to sports. And I'm like, where'd he get that from? <laughs> I was a running back. I was probably coming out of high school, I was maybe 150 pounds, maybe 150 some pounds. And coming from a league that didn't get a lot of attention, like I said, it was a, it was an inner city public public league football league. Um, big schools really didn't, even though I had good numbers, I had a lot of touchdowns, had a lot of yards. Big schools really wasn't looking, checking out for me like that. Brent had record years in high school, but his size kept bigger schools from calling. That all changed when Coach Nixon, who was recruiting, showed his video to the Division II school Shippensburg coaching staff. Now that was prime recruiting ground for, uh, for, for Shippensburg. You know, Philadelphia is about two and a half hours away. And immediately, you know, when I uh, got a chance to see Brent play on film, uh, I knew he would uh, definitely uh, fit in to what we like to do on offense or defense. He was that type of athlete. First time that I saw Brent Grimes was on film, recruiting film out of high school from Northeast High School. Uh, Jeff Nixon was recruiting his high school, brought it in, and uh, us as a staff took a look at it. And we also, you know, looked at him at running back, defensive back type of thing. And at that time, I was coaching the defensive backs. and. Uh, um, you know, I saw something special in him, that's for sure. He was known for his skills as a running back, but his coaches felt that Brent could play at a higher level as a defensive back. When I got to, uh, to Shippensburg, that's when I met Coach Mack. He was like, man, I'm watching your film. You will be an amazing DB. He, he played running back in high school, and, and on film you could see that he had hips and he was fluid, and he was so athletic, you know, as far as staying on his feet and what he could do. and. Uh, you know, that's exactly what you look for in a defensive back. And I knew he had speed, um, you know, and there was a little bit of defensive back film of him that you could see him doing some things. So I was interested right away about him becoming a defensive back, and I thought he'd be a great one. We thought he was a defensive back, you know, because of his size. You know, he wasn't very big. Uh, he made a lot of big plays as a running back, and uh, truth be told, that's the position he really wanted to play. And, you know, we, we had you know, told him, you know, we were going to try him at both positions and, you know, see where he would stick and where he could get on the field the fastest and he ended up being at, at defensive back. Uh, but a lot of other schools did, in fact, recruit him as a, as a running back, and I joke with him all the time, you know, imagine if you went to uh, Bloomsburg University and, and played running back, how your career would have been as compared to going to ship and playing defensive back and, you know, obviously now taking off and having the chance to I wanted to, Brent to go down south to school. Brent did not want to leave the area, and he claims it was because he wasn't recruited. But in order to go to another school, you had to go visit the schools. If I had not pushed Brent and put in the application and sent it off, Brent probably would have still been home with me. Brent? It doesn't get excited about a lot of things or he doesn't show a lot of emotion unless he's on the field there and uh, so you couldn't get a good vibe from him as far as if he was interested in Shippensburg or what the deal was going to be but uh, you know coach Nixon did a great job with him and uh, got Brent to commit to us and then when we got him on campus uh, you know that's when I really saw what he was about athletically. Coach Mack was Brent's favorite coach at Shippensburg. Everybody wants to go to a Division One school for obvious reasons, a big, bigger school, more exposure, better chance to go to NFL, NBA, whatever you want to say. And um, yeah, you want to go for those reasons, but I mean, I, it didn't happen for me. And once, um, after I decided to go to ship, it wasn't, I mean, I was just going to play football and see what happened. Brent made a name for himself at Shippensburg. I think the first time I saw him practice and actually, um, you know, on the field, not that he was doing everything right, but his athleticism was was ridiculous. Punt return is probably my favorite thing to do. Uh, 
in football. It's like you just get the ball and you get to just go. Yeah, you got a little structure, but it's kind of like playing outside when you're a kid. Just just go make people miss and just try to break some tackles and score. And that's how I treated it in college, and I had a lot of fun with it. He kind of played backyard football. You know, he wanted to go where the ball was and, and worry about where the ball and. It took a little bit of time, which does with everybody, to kind of get them disciplined with their eyes and their technique of what they're supposed to do. I went to Shippensburg every home game. Brent's mother was the major factor in Brent being where he is today. I would just take him to ordinary noodle, oodles and noodles and ramen noodles and chips and different things. Nothing, because I wasn't a cook. So he wasn't expecting me to bring him food. <laughs> Coach Mack can recall his most memorable moment. It was an interception that he had against Kutztown out here at Seth Grove Stadium that uh, where he was, looked like Superman going through the air, you know, horizontal. And uh, I swear he was in air for five seconds, you know, laid uh, out, uh, looked like an airplane and made a, a catch that uh, I never thought anybody could make. Uh, that's one of the big memories I have on Looking deep, and it's thrown and intercepted. It's Brent Grimes picks it off at the five yard line. He went up for that time. And that gives Brent Grimes a tie for most interceptions in the PSAC player. Coach Mack had a big influence on Brent. I started saying to him, I said, Brent, you have all the tools in the world to go to the next level. It clicked, like it was like, Wow, you know, he just told me that. You know, it was about a sophomore year when I we started talking about it, and I started talking to him about it as far as this is something that could be in your future. It stuck with me. After that, I took everything more serious as far as football, as far as working out, lifting, getting on time, you know, caring about teammates, being there in practice, doing everything right. Because, you know, coming to a D2 school, you don't hear the story that much like of a guy going D2 and making it to the NFL. That was always a dream of mine as a kid, you know, to make it to the NFL. But when I went D2, it was kind of like, uh, you know, you know, you're probably not going to make it. You can try it, but it's not a good chance. But when he told me that, it kind of clicked. Brent has done a tremendous job, and uh, a lot of people wouldn't have uh, expected him to do that, and a lot of people didn't give him a chance to do that. And uh, I think that uh, it's, it's special that Brent w went and kept working at it and proved a lot of people wrong. After college, I had a great college career, had a lot of interceptions, a lot of punt return yards, a lot of kickoff return yards, things like that. But, you know, like I said, I'm coming from D2, um, you know, a smaller guy. I didn't know. You know, maybe it was an outside chance that I could get picked up late. I think too many people were afraid of his size. Brent had draft expectations, but no phones rang. The last day of the draft, he was sitting there and we were all sitting looking at TV and he came in my room and I remember he got on his knees alongside of my bed and said, Mom, I'm not going to get drafted, am I? I said, well, it doesn't matter. You'll go somewhere. Brent would find his way to Atlanta and try to make the team as an undrafted free agent. Right after that, the phone rang and he got the call from the Falcons. And I said, Brent, you just got to go down there and prove everybody wrong. And you have the ability to do that. And I know he was excited. He was a little scared at the same time. But uh, it was a great opportunity for him. What I came in on with Atlanta was like a mini camp, like tryout. So I had to make the team. So my first my first rep I had one-on-ones was, was an interception. And I mean, that was cool. And I made plays throughout that mini camp. And then I stuck around. But complications came during mini camp and Brent's plans changed. I got hurt before I played a preseason game. It was like, well, since we didn't get to see you play against, I mean, a higher level of competition, we're gonna um, bring you in, I mean, send you to NFL Europe. I felt sick, cause my child's down there, he's upset. He gets, calls me back, mom, another team picked me up, so I'm going to Germany. My agent told me they wanted me to go over to Europe. I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> no, I don't really want to do that, but I know I had to. It was, it sucked, you know, I'm not a fan of long flights. That was the biggest thing in my mind, like, it, just that flight, I was like, oh my gosh, I got to go on a 10-hour flight. 
With the flight behind him, he quickly adjusted to the German lifestyle, playing for the Hamburg Sea Devils. Germany was cool. Like, I had a, I had a good time. When I was in Germany, I dealing with a lot of, you know, trying to order food and things like that. I did pick up on some, some of the German language. I would never call myself a, a pro or an expert or could I translate for a whole bunch of people. Brent had a great season with the Sea Devils and helped the team reach their first World Bowl appearance against the reigning champions, Frankfurt Galaxy. Again, no blitz. O'Sullivan telegraphed it and it's picked off. Brent Grimes is going to walk in and Tomberg has the lead. Brent Grimes told us he's gotten a couple emails from Emmett Thomas, the secondary's coach, DB coach in Atlanta, about his play. And Coach Thomas has got to be pleased with what he saw from Grimes there. We had a good year. We won the championship. I had a lot of fun. And the Hamburg Sea Devils begin their celebration. They've come to Frankfurt and won World Bowl 15. But when it was all over, after we won that championship, I was definitely ready to get back to the United States. Coming home from Germany, Brent was back at work with the Falcons. Probably get a week or two off and then it's training camp. He finally made it to the regular season of the NFL and made his first career start with the Atlanta Falcons. First team I, I started against was the uh, Arizona Cardinals. Their two main receivers were Fitzgerald and Anquan Bolden, and uh, Kurt Warner was their quarterback. During his time in Atlanta, Brent met the woman that would take his heart. Some mutual friends of ours um, told me about him and was trying to play a little Cupid, I guess. I was going out with some friends and they kind of hooked us up. We went to a club together and I met her there. And we met and cracked some jokes because he, he walked up to me and said, are you the girl that, you know, I heard plays basketball? She's an inch shorter than me, but in heel, she's way taller than me. I had on like six inch heels that night. So I just acted like I didn't hear him. I was just looking around like, who said that? You know, because he was shorter than me. And she was saying she could play and we got to play and all that type of stuff. And that's pretty much how we kicked it off. And we exchanged numbers and, you know, we just start dating after that. After a couple of successful seasons in the NFL, he was sidelined with an injury in the 2012 opener against the Chiefs. I'm downtown and somebody said they're carrying Brent off. They thought it was just a sprain or something, and they find out it was his Achilles. It was a tough time. It was a, it was a major injury. But me knowing myself, I didn't doubt my ability to come back. And so we decided to go with the best doctor in the world, the foot and ankle doctor, which is Dr. Anderson and Charlotte. The toughest part of the rehab was when I wasn't doing anything. Like when uh, you got a cast on, and you just got to sit there with your foot in the air so it don't swell too much. My husband is kind of like a child where he's going to start moving and touching and doing things a little bit too early so I had the doctor leave it on just a little longer to make sure he had every opportunity to return the best way possible. Are you going to cry? I'm going to bleed. Are you? Don't worry, you're in the right place. <laughs> I know, right? That was the toughest part. Anybody that knows me, I'm bouncing around, I'm off the wall, always doing something, always running, jumping. So that was probably the, the toughest part of it. How's your time in the cast been? Sucks. Yeah, I'm sure. Once I got to run and the tough stuff, other people would say it's tough, like running and lifting and, and doing the, the, the stuff that the trainers had to do to make sure it's ready. That was cool with me because I, I, I looked at it as a challenge. Next week on Under the Helmet, Brent walks for the first time after his injury. How does it feel? Feel weird. You'll meet his son. He's nervous. And surprise his mom. Welcome home, Debbie. Oh, I love that. Yo, he still don't get it. <laughs>